Welcome to our Compose Cast, where we discuss productivity, self hosting, career professionalism, and innovative technology. Here to bring you the latest from the open source ecosystem and beyond is yours truly, Andrew Syriac. And with me is my co host, Jack Moore. How are you doing today, Jack? I'm doing well. It's a little cold down here. I don't know if you guys got any snow up there. Uh, it's now mid to late April and we got, I think, two to three inches. I woke up with two to three inches of snow on the ground. So it was pretty crazy. It was something else. But yeah, I don't know. Other than that, I'm doing well. I'm doing all right. How, how, how are you doing? How are you today? Yeah, no, I had I had the same thing. I was watching the snow actually fall from the trees throughout the day because it was it was getting warmer and warmer. Yeah, it was it was fine for my for my workout this afternoon but yeah in the in the morning i woke up and and rolled over to the other side of the bed and and stand up well not actually stand up but the metaphorical teams lay <laughs> teams lay down exactly uh they're like yeah it's snowing outside i'm like what <laughs> I, had to, I had to go open my window i was like oh, i guess it is but yeah i'm excited for today's show we got a couple things out there so couple news items uh if you're ready to jump into it i know we got a few intro items here i'm gonna start i got high quality audio makes you sound smarter a nice little tidbit a nice link i don't know if you got a chance to look at it but it was some research that went out um actually it was it came from a marketing newsletter marketing um blog site but apparently there was research that was done by some uh researcher from i think it was usc that said uh, people rated a physicist talk as 19.3% better when they listened to it in high versus low audio quality. So hopefully if you're hearing us through these mics, we sound a little bit smarter. <laughs> I know we always have to fine tune at the end and it's always, uh, I don't even know what to call it at the end where in post going back through and making sure the compression's right and every, all the levels are correct, you know, EQ sounding all right. But um, yeah, an interesting post I saw uh, pertaining to, you know, sounding, you know, sounding smarter if your auto audio quality is better. I think it gets into the why here. I, there was the one thing, why the, why it works is what really what I want to kind of focus in on. Um, I think they link to the article in there, but the why it works basically is messages that are difficult to process are less compelling. For example, we're less likely to think a message is true if it's written in a hard to read font. We're less likely to believe someone with a hard to understand accent or hard to pronounce name. And then we're less likely to think that an author is intelligent if the handwriting is hard to understand or they use an unusual word. Uh, it's because we associate the message with the messenger. So a speaker in this case, a hard to understand message lowers our impression of the person as well. So kind of interesting take on it. We we'll definitely want to toss it out there just because we always, I, I feel like we've put out a very high quality audio podcast, but I don't know. People may have different thoughts. If you do, let us know. We can always, we're always here to improve, right? We can definitely improve the, the video quality, I think, yeah. uh, pretty <laughs> easily. Yeah. First of all, we'll get you a wired connection and an actual computer that can power stuff. Yeah, that uh, first on the list right there. Hey, maybe get a drill too while you're at it. Drilling the holes here. <laughs> get that Seriously. wired connection lined Seriously. up. Seriously. Yeah, I didn't know if you had anything to add on that one or with that one. No, I mean that that is actually part and parcel with with everything that that I understand about media production with with AV production is that sound is going to be number one, but also kind of presentation right and and people's perception is important so anytime that you're you're not able to present yourself in a very straightforward easy to understand way your message is going to suffer right so that that totally makes sense all right uh moving on the next article we have is from the document foundation so these are the guys who maintain LibreOffice which is the alternative Microsoft Office suite uh, presenter, writer, um, the, the whole gambit. They made an announcement uh, and actually really forwarded on an announcement that the Dortmund Council in Germany had passed a memorandum 2020 um, and that extended to 2025 uh, where the... The two central resolutions that are important uh, were they pledged to use open source software 
where possible, and that software developed by the administration or commissioned for development is made available to the general public. So right now they're just trying to put open source uh, wherever possible inside of, of their proceedings, right? So, yeah. so whoever's, whatever office in government is using that is, is, is going to be using open source software or, or, or should be using open source software, right? Uh, there, there has been an ongoing campaign uh, called public money, public code. Uh, so that, I mean, that's throughout the EU, just an understanding that, Hey, if you're going to sp- spend public money on, on code, right? Make that code open source available, available to the public. For everybody, right? Exactly. So, the one other thing I also saw in that article was that uh, in the future, the administration will have to justify why open source software cannot be used for every proprietary software application that they purchase or use. Which, I mean, that's that's almost like submitting in a security exception. You just got to say, eh, it doesn't make business case, and then you, business sense and move on. It's going to be interesting to see where this this goes um, and and really how close this is being followed. Now, if you remember, uh, Munich a couple of years ago had done the exact same thing. Obviously, a much larger city, but uh, they had opted to go with open source software for all of the things. And they actually had turned around and they had uh, gone back to using Microsoft uh products and, and the Microsoft suite. Now, that's in no small part to Microsoft setting up regional headquarters in the city prior to that. Um, in, in, well, or, or they were like thinking about leaving the city or something like that. So there was definitely incentive for the city of Munich to keep such a large employer and revenue generator within the city. So so they Microsoft kind of had their, their hands there. Uh, but, but then also Obviously, open source software is free as in beer, right? The free as in speech, but it's not free as in time. And it does take a lot of time to change the workflow, especially one that you've used for decades, probably because they're still running Windows 95. So what are you, you going to do? I mean, you're, you're going to have to retrain the entirety of your staff, and you're going to have to figure out, you know, what what needs to, to change and, and you're going to have sysadmins admins who, who don't understand the system, everyone else in their, their positions, especially if you're making a very big change like that, you, you, you're going to have to figure out what all needs to change. And that's going to be huge investment in time and people and, and, and brain power. So this is, this is a lot of dedication. Now I think Dortmund's, approach is probably a little bit more easy to stomach, right? Because it's not mandated and then everything be switched over to, to open source all at once. Uh, it says, let's introduce it where it makes sense to as, as much as we can. So it's not necessarily a dictate, but it, it does have a little bit more force behind it than a mere suggestion. So I'm happy to see it. And I will keep my ear to the ground to see if there are any developments on that. It's interesting that you pointed out uh, that, you know, it's like applying for a security exception. You're right in the fact that it is pretty easy to do. But also, I did find it very interesting because, you know, how strict are they going to be with that, right? How, you know, how much are they going to hold them to? Hey, you need, you know, you need to use open source code. That We know there's some available for this. Can you use that over something that's proprietary? But yeah, you're probably, you're probably more or less right. Practicality, it's, you know, we need this because of this. Okay, you got it. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, I can take this third one here if you don't. Sure. If, if you can chime in, definitely feel free to add anything. Uh, I it's an old one. I think I saw it was from March, late March here, but Victoria University of Wellington accidentally nukes files on all desktop PCs. I love the quote that they have. <laughs> I always do that. I always mess up some mundane detail. Michael Bolton from I guess it was <laughs> Office Space. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious absolutely terrible this is just terrible <laughs> here especially when you read the article it says you know last friday it staff at the victoria university of wellington started a maintenance procedure aimed at reclaiming some space on the university network in theory by removing the profiles of students who no longer attend the university the real impact unfortunately was much larger 
<laughs> affecting students, faculty, and staff across the university. That's just a bad look for IT right there. Like they also didn't have backups, I saw. And it was, you know, PhD students. It was everybody that was affected. My favorite PhD students had research that was over years. It was years of research that they had. I guess the profile got wiped. They didn't have any kind of backup. It kind of a double shame right there. Why wouldn't you keep even a hard, you know, a hard drive with data on it as a PhD student? Um, but the profile got wiped and they lost everything, you know, just terrible all around. Just kind of sucks, and it's, but <laughs> it's visceral too. Like the the way that it it comes across is uh, if if you saw, they said that. Files stored on the university network drives or on OneDrive cloud storage were, were fully protected, but only the files on their desktop were gone. So like people were logging into their laptops, their university issued laptops, and everything on their computer was gone. It just it was it was wiped. It, and and it was it was the capacity of, of the administrators to reach into their laptops and literally just wipe everything. And it's not even that having that, you know, with, with great power comes great responsibility, but it's also just the something stupid like this could happen. <laughs> um, one thing I did want to point out, though, and, and, and kind of take away from this, besides the whole privacy and, and file ownership and stuff, was was backup, was was syncing, right? I mean, you, you yeah, were talking about, totally. like, even... On your, you know, your your dad's phone uh, that 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 got wiped. These profiles that that got messed up. I mean, the the salvation in in this case was Microsoft OneDrive, which is comparable to what Nextcloud offers as a sync service. I mean, if you're going to have files on your computer, they better be somewhere else too. All right, right. If, if you care about them at all, the easiest way to do that is install some kind of a syncing agent, right? So you can use OneDrive, you can use Dropbox. Obviously, we offer Nextcloud. That's my preference. Uh, but having having some kind of a backup is is eminently necessary. And I, I, I just wanted to point out that the, a lot of people's work was saved because they used a desktop sync client like this. Uh, so if if you're you're working on on anything on your computer that's even remotely important, sync the folder it takes not it, a whole it, lot of network it can be space. done in the background it can yeah be done in the bed something that just, i know the next cloud sync client that i have it just kind of run it kind of yeah. runs it it i think even it's even on change it says all right notice a change syncing up right now yeah so yeah it, it it it's very unobtrusive and it's just a way to get peace of mind now don't get me wrong it's not a complete backup solution right you're 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 gonna want your next slide instance backed up so the the files there are backed up in case you were to wipe out everything on there right and and that's something that we can provide you right that 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 backup process and 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 going forward right so so if you are concerned about something like this um we're going to talk about next cloud and mobile later right but if if you don't have this set up i would strongly recommend uh you going through our our next cloud documentation as we go through the the desktop or or uh, sending us a, a a comment, right, or 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 at least subscribing to the mailing list so you get notifications. And we can we can kind of push this out to you and and give you updates on on where this is and what we can provide to you. Yeah, if not just for NextCloud and the services we offer, but also, you know, we do offer instances and in, for NextCloud, NextCloud instances. So yep, just yeah, want to exactly. put that out there. Um, and and we continue yeah, to. To, to, to upgrade those things too like and and as as we're going through as we as we continue to evolve our offering right I mean we're we're adding in new features like uh, some of the health check issues that we ran into and fixed with the the portal uh, uh, update Jack if you wanted to talk to that yeah really it's more of a back-end feature for us um, for admins as admins we can kind of watch we we can do self-check on instances and you know, as services, if they do go down, get, don't get me wrong, stuff goes down, or if they're not checking in properly, or if something's up with one of your services, we're able to proactively see that and react react to it before. the The goal is to hit it before you do, before you and see any kind of issues. Um, so we pushed out a new, what do you want to call it? minor bug, minor minor release, basically any kind of health services. Any kind of health check that is 
goes wrong or is incorrect, we get a notification on that, and that way we can check it out if it's incorrect. So it, it automatically, on the first go, it kind of automatically fixes it, try, attempts to fix itself, and then on that second or third failure, it, it says, hey, get a person involved kind of deal. Um, and then on the back end too as well, what, what was happening is some of the checks were making some assumptions, right? Kind of like what I ran into while I was trying to deploy this today from the execution prep. Uh, just not taking into account, you know, first one scenario or, or, or what have you. Um, so I, I wanted to make sure that we stay on top of that. And, and that's actually something we talked about on, on our Q2 discussion about what we want to do. We want to kind of make Portal more resilient, right? And we, it kind of started life as something that was, was slapped together to, to put a face to the, the instance. And now it's evolving into to so much more. I mean, we're... We're starting to pile on functionality here and uh, just cleaning up these little paper cuts is is going to feel like a lot more polished solution. So I'm really excited to see where we take it from here. I know we have a lot of plans, Q2 here. We did have quite a bit of other news and other releases out there if you wanted to hop into those. I think. Oh boy, did we did, ever. Did you, yeah, I was going to say we can go through all of them. Did you have any favorites before we get started here? I like, I like that Jekyll updated. Um, I didn't have necessarily it was a minor any release favorites. though. What I saw, the uh, bug fix or the release I saw for Jekyll was a lot smaller compared to some of these others. Dan Brown, shout out to you, wherever Dan you are. Dan Brown, Dan Brown, launching book stack v twenty one point oh four. Probably one of the more confusing versioning systems I've seen out there. Uh, and and actually he he addresses this here because he. His versioning scheme, I, I I don't necessarily know if I was able to keep up, but there was a lot of beta releases. Uh, and and he's he's actually, uh, he said after collecting some feedback from, on GitHub, he's dropping the, the beta status from any versions and release notes. He said he's going to the year-month uh, patch digit cycle. So uh, it's... It's very similar to the Ubuntu release cycle. So 2104 means it was released in 2021 and the fourth month, April in 2021. Uh, and there is no point release, uh, which is optional. So it's it's just the first release of 2021 in, in April. Uh, and so he will be releasing it like that, which is obviously way easier to parse uh, in, yeah. in code programmatically than whatever was put out before v beta uh, 31 something yeah exactly uh and you know he's he's added a couple features here support for custom footer links search content by owner uh, back end theme system uh, sorting control audit log just a lot of different things including a health check endpoint so that's going to be very nice when it comes to health checking these docker containers it, it's it's going to make it simple and as we go forward and seeing a lot of these self-hosted service implement this, I wouldn't be surprised if this is something we see as a more standardized approach to what's going on with with your instance, because it's a lot easier to do that than some kind of a custom curl script that I gotta I gotta slap together and and and, and figure out how to pull that down. Um, uh, and then lastly, here he talks about dark mode by default. So love that. Obviously, I'm uh, dark all the way. So, some some really really cool updates here. Um, this will be rolled out eventually by us, uh, not immediately. So we're gonna see if he has any optional patch digits after this. If he figures out anything else, like is common in code releases, to find some breaking change. Uh, so so excited to see that he took feedback from communities and. I don't know if you've been keeping your ear to the ground, but there's been several bits of feedback from different communities. Lutris immediately springs to mind where the maintainer and the community don't necessarily see eye to eye. They're not necessarily on the same page. And I'm, I'm really just glad to see that he said after collecting feedback on GitHub, which means he's kind of in tune with his community. Um, now, he yeah. does also run a Discord server. Uh, which I've started to be more active on that platform, not by choice. It's not open, but it it works, and that may have something to do with it too. I don't know where he fosters his community, how his community is brought together. I mean, 
we run the subreddit and uh, I enjoy throwing a lot of links in, having discussions around around that. Um, I don't know if a chat system is more robust than that. I don't know if a forum is is necessarily going to be the the better approach. I'm still kind of trying stuff out myself, and and it seems like there's right yeah there's a there's a real breakaway right now as to where you want to gather your community around you, right? And and how do you maintain that community? How do you build that tribe? How do you how do you build that uh, the, the the kind of interaction with the people that you're you're working with right and uh for some it seems to be discord and and uh, other chat platforms more traditionally it's been forum software but simply having a place to gather is going to be important you know whatever kind of community you're trying to build um so there there you know and and there may just be advantages for like open source projects are, are going to fare better on forums. Whereas like uh, performance artists are going to do better, you know, in, in chat clients. I don't know. I don't know. So that's something I'm, I'm bouncing around my own head. Uh, Navigate, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if anyone has a preference, uh, feel free to, to drop a note in the subreddit because I mean, that's, that's where our discussions happen currently. And, uh, you know, if you think you have a better alternative, you know, just go to uh, reddit.com slash r slash r compose and we'd be more than happy to, to engage and, and meet you wherever you choose to spend your time on the Internet. So uh, moving forward from that, there were, like you said, Jack, a number of other releases. I think most of them were, were all fairly minor. Um, Firefly 3, I said it had a big update last time. And as always, with big updates, there are more issues coming out. So he's uh, released 557. Um, and already there's 20 commits to Master since that released. I mean, there's this this guy continues to pump out code. I love it. I love it. He's he's so he's got such a flame and fire under him to to go get this stuff. So there's there's plenty in Firefly 3 there to get excited about. Um, also, Jekyll 3.9.1 was really released, and, and this is the one that you were talking about, Jack. Yeah, this is the uh, patch release in the 3.9 series. Basically, now you're able to use support for these special characters. Yeah, you know you you know that you know that pain in the butt that pain in the butt when when someone's trying to trying to create a password. You're like, no, you need special characters. Yeah, you're like, I come on, man, <laughs> I don't need this, and uh, obviously that, that causes a lot of code to fail, right? Because it's got to parse that and usually it's using that to parse it some other type of way. Um, especially in Jinja, which is a formatting language is it uses all of these things by default. So, um, usually best case scenario would be you quote your file name, but if you're too lazy to do that, they did backport a, uh, a, a bug fix, uh, to Jekyll 3.9. And, and really, I just wanted to bring this to the attention to say, Hey, they're still backporting to 3.9. This right. thing is still supported. Like I said, 4.0 was a huge jump. And a lot of things got left in the dust unsupported. What I love about this community is they know that. They know there's a lot of things that people are still using out there in the wild that can't deal with it. People just don't have the time to go back and, and update it because of like features that they're never going to use. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that, that 3.9 is still getting that, that love and, and support. Um, let's see what else. Camboard also got a minor, minor bump. Uh, they updated the Hungarian translation. So the, uh, Hungarian in me likes that, uh, but just a lot of little other bumps, uh, feature bumps, updating the Docker image, which is always good to see, making sure we're on the bleeding edge there and, and other dependencies, uh, nothing really else that's, that's interesting. Just a lot of a lot of little paper cuts that they're healing from as well. Um, I'm hoping to finalize some of my alarm stuff to get that in maybe 1.2.21, maybe 22. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, he, you know, uh, Frederick just keeps pumping out releases as well. So great to see it. I mean, it is a stable, solid application. I couldn't imagine my life without it. So. Uh, and then lastly, Nextcloud has an update. Uh, their first uh, update to their 21 version is out, um, and minor version bumps to 20 and 19. Uh, there's not a lot I saw. Did did anything catch your eye besides like the end, 
the end of support for 18? No, there I didn't see anything. Well, they're still pushing the uh, high performance back end for the files, so I'm still taking a look and see if we can't integrate Rust on the server. You know what I heard today in the last Jupiter Broadcasting episode that Android, the like the the operating system, not like the the Java applications on top of it, like actually the, yeah. the operating system. Um, the biggest concern right now, as far as bugs go, as a category of bugs, is the memory safety bugs, and when I say memory safety bugs, because it's written in C and C++, right? And we're thinking, well, how do we mitigate those? We could either include even more testing and even more QA, and that's still not going to solve the problem. Or we can learn from Google, and they can issue a roadmap, which I have done, for Rust support for the Android operating system itself. So Android itself may be starting to be written in Rust, which is exciting news for anyone who... Uh, is a fan of that programming language as I am. I was gonna say, have you haven't you written a little bit of Rust there? Yeah, yeah, it's it's great, it's fun. It's way too low level for me to use day to day, but like, were I to create something for scratch or create like a memory intense program or or a uh, efficient program that needs to be super efficient, I mean that that would be my first go to. I wouldn't even mess with C or C plus plus anymore. There's no reason. Is me- so is, is it memory safe then? Does it do its own garbage collection and all that? Yes, not only not only that, but it's built around a whole ethos where your borrowing and your variable scope is enforced right from the get go, right? So it's like it's like how Python has those um, while open, uh, yeah, where it automatically closes it once you're done with that variable variable scope. It does the exact same thing. Uh, for the low static, the low level statically typed languages like Rust, and it it just has it has a lot of really nice uh, features. I say features because it makes it a little bit more difficult to program. But you look at a more popular language like Go, which tried to do kind of the same thing. Like a lot of demons are written in Go, um, and that's because it's really easy to write Go. But it has a lot of artificially limited. Uh, scope so it 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 has a lot of limits that that are are almost arbitrary where you're like why won't it let me do this there's no good reason for it to let me do this except for maybe this one edge case that you know the the architects were trying to avoid but i i think rust gets it right and they've been doing it they've been releasing a lot more slowly than go has and it's interesting to see the momentum start to build up in the places that matter. Uh, as well, the Linux kernel itself uh, started, one of its development branches implemented a Rust interpreter. So kernel code okay. can okay. now be written in Rust in one of the development branches. So uh, I think Greg KH said something like, we'll see where it goes. <laughs> and he, and he sure, just left it right. at that. Right. And I was like, all right, cool. There's hope. There's hope. So that was really fun to see. Uh, anyways, I got totally sidetracked on that as, as I would typically do. Um, uh, oh, I should have put portal under our composed developments. Oh, well. So that was our, our composed developments. <laughs> all right. Surprise. <laughs> all right. Do we did we have anything else that we we got done that we well we were gonna talk about the uh, was it play compositional that we were uh, messing with today that right you were messing with today right before the show no I wasn't gonna talk about that I wasn't gonna talk about that at all no no I'm still a little salty about that maybe I'll talk about it when I feel better about it I I I think you should explain what happened oh what you were what we were doing what you were doing before the show. How we went to deploy an episode, and you know stuff kind of hit the Thanks. fan. Thanks. Do you want to explain? Thanks. Do you want to explain what happened there? I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't. I'll I'll explain it to you because I think you you deserve an explanation. But the the logic that I implemented for figuring out. Well, I had this I had this whole workflow, like the diagram. Yeah. I was I was trying to diagram everything out because what we wanted to do is is uh, for one of the things we decided to do in Q two is is try to move. Our compose instances to more self-contained uh, type of architecture where, where it could basically run itself without the need 
for external infrastructure. And one of the requirements there is that it had its own self-contained environment rather than one that, that we maintain. So what I had to do is, is I had to figure out when Portal tries to fix itself, it has to know what branch uh, of, of the role it's running. If it's running a stable branch or an unstable branch or a development branch or, or, or what have you. And obviously be able to set that and, and tweak that as part of the self-contained aspect of it. So how do we set that on the back end as we're deploying instances as well as leave it to be able to be self-maintained, right? Because we, we want to we maintain that balance. I don't want to become too tyrannical about it, and I don't want to give free reign for anyone right. to do whatever they want. Uh, so we were going to set it in the, the environment prep, and in order to do so, I had to test if it was already existing in there before I set it. And to do so, I used a... a double negative I was comparing two strings and I said if not two strings don't equal each other which is not the way to <laughs> well see this is the thing though we ran it in dev and it well we ran it in its own branch and it worked yeah right we ran it in its own branch yep. and I I even peer checked that code and I was like yeah this is fine you know I looked at the code that ran and I was like this looks fine no, you know nothing nothing stood out to me when I was walking through it so we go to run it. He goes, Andrew goes to run it today. Sure enough, <laughs> I'm looking through the code again. Right after he says it, I'm seeing, oh yeah, there is a double negative in there. It was a, if not, not equal to master. And sure enough, we were running against master. So guess what? That conditional was not hitting uh, yeah. true. And there's, I'd call it a little Easter egg in there. So he was getting his own, <laughs> his own little Easter egg on the air. But <laughs> um yeah, yeah I, I'm yeah. excited to see yeah. self-contained. <laughs> I am excited to see kind of that self-contained environment. I don't even know what you want to call it. A self-contained deploy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, once because yeah. our aim at this point is is to have it be able to be deployed independently of any of our infrastructure. Now, right. there are definite advantages to using a instance that's maintained by us because there, right. I was gonna there, say, there we... are peripherals like the backups, right? And the updates and the security fixes and right, you're 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 getting all that. Whereas a self contained instance would be you're something that of... you're deploying, you're messing around with, you're having fun with, you can pick at the internals of it. I don't I don't necessarily care, right? And you know, you may we you are always always welcome to reach out on the on the forums to ask and you know if there's there's any questions but there's not going to be any kind of official support for anything like that that would simply just be if you want to mess around with it right and and I don't want that to be tied to something that I need to maintain and spin up and 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 hold right. the keys for and the secrets and the that's 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 not what we're aiming for here. I mean, sure we can make it open source, but what's the use if you can't right. spin it up yourself? It's it's worthless at that point. So right. I, I don't want to release something that's worthless. So uh, Q2 is like I said, you know, at at the end of of Q2, if we're able to hit what we set out to accomplish, we're gonna have some really cool stuff available. Some really cool stuff available. So and one of those cool things that we host is Nextcloud, as we've been going over for the past couple of, of weeks here. This one is taking this Nextcloud show on the road. And by that, I mean... I love that. Not... I absolutely love that. Yeah, that's that's such a good title. But yeah, you, sorry to cut you off there, but yeah. yeah <laughs> no, yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's You're fine. <laughs> it's, it was... Uh, yeah, and, and, and what I mean by that is taking it mobile, right? And, and by mobile, I mean anything that's going to be not a computer sitting in front of you. So basically, your Android's right oh, your yeah. your iPhones uh, what whatever you use that's that's not going to be your computer because that's still important turns out uh, and and this really I I wanted to get to because I think it was uh, two or three instances I know Jack you were talking about your dad lost his his, his contacts on his phone if you if you wanted to rehash that and we can kind of jump in from there yeah it was um shoot i forget i think he was either getting a new phone or he was doing a major upgrade on his phone and something happened where he lost all the photos every single photo he had taken on his phone so he lost photos and contacts yeah I, i'm thinking of two separate i'm thinking of two separate instances here 
he's okay the guy has lost <laughs> both <laughs> let me let me go back here he okay so i'm thinking of the photos instance where he accidentally deleted like a shared drive or something that he had and then sure enough wiped wiped it like wiped it from nfs and he's just like oh crap and he's like wait i think i have backup somewhere and sure enough some like <laughs> there you go lo and there behold it was like they're like some third party providers like oh yeah we have that data here and he's just like um can i get that back i didn't even know you had it <laughs> but um the phone situation was he was upgrading his phone he was switching to a major version release and essentially what happened was when he switched he added a new i think it was caldav or con you can in the iphone i think you can add a new mailbox essentially is what it is well he went to link a new account and sure enough it deleted the old account and when it deleted that old account it deleted all his contacts with it so luckily for him he did have he, he he did have some kind of backup situation in place with that um where he was able to retrieve most of his contacts but you know some of them were just gone ended up he ended up losing forever they were just gone forever so what i've started to do is i on my i have a board i have a combo board i have my little can board out there i have a recurring task you know it sounds lame but every six months i just do like a backup for everything and i and some people may do like once a month some people may do all, all the time but it's like every six months i want to export everything and upload it somewhere that is not my phone so that way when i restore i'm not sol coming from zero basically yeah and what what you want to be not in the situation of is is having that oh there's got to be backup somewhere i'm sure hopefully maybe terrible situation to be in yeah terrible situation so what can we do to provide some of that surety well first first we kind of have to go through you know what is on this thing like what what do we what do we care about what do you want um, on it, right? Yeah, what, what, have on what do you want on it? Now, a lot of it is cloud services. So a lot of it is, you know, if, I, if I'm if i installing Discord on my mobile device, I'm, I'm installing a client. I'm installing a client that talks to a service, a software as a service in, in the cloud or, or on the web where I don't need to necessarily be concerned about backing it up. That's, that's something I would log into with credentials and my information is going to be there different kind of security posture what you want to back up from there like if someone were to send you photos to have backed up uh but it's not going to be something that you're going to sync from your phone uh, what you're what you're going to want to be interested in syncing from your phone is is a couple of things um and and next slide actually lays it out really well because they have different applications for different functionality so to start with Exactly. So to start with, they have their official Nextcloud application, just branded Nextcloud. Boom, they're done. Uh, that is namely for files and photos. So the the blurb here is that the official Android application manages files and synchronizes them back to Nextcloud server if it's set up to do so. This also allows for auto sync of folders and locations on the device. Uh, so let let me just let you know how how I use this, right? So. Uh, there are a couple things that I really only do through my my computer, right? And and uh, image manipulation and touch up is is one of those things. I'm not sure. necessarily installing a full GIMP instance on on my phone to to do touch ups and and uh, editing and cropping and and what have you. So when I'm taking pictures from my camera, they gotta get transferred onto my computer somehow, and I can do that over the wire. Right, if I need to. Uh, the easiest way, though, is if I'm being honest, just throwing them up into my next cloud instance, and I can download whichever ones I want. Right. Okay. So do they sync automatically up from the so mobile that's, app? That's that's okay. not set up by default. Right. Okay. So there's yeah. there's a couple ways you can set this up. Now there are tons of files on your Android phone. I don't know if you've ever gone through. Um, I know you even have an iPhone, so you may not have had the ability to yet. But there are a lot of different directories and folders and file structures on on a phone, right? Nextcloud can walk through all those and determine which ones you want synced, auto-synced, up to your Nextcloud instance. Um, now, actually, specifically for photos, that is probably my favorite in, example to go to and, and just say, look, 
you don't want to lose any of your photos right and if you don't have them going anywhere else then they only live on your phone and if they right. only live on your phone you might as well not have them right because the minute that phone gets dropped in the toilet yeah. you're screwed right 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 so or get snow on it like we had today for some dumb reason in the middle of, yeah okay, in the yeah. middle of of april so the easiest way is just to auto sync anything that gets put into that directory which if you take a picture with the camera on your phone it gets thrown in that directory so you send that right up to next slide and then you can figure out what to do with it as well. Um, now there's also additional functionality you gotta think about like, do you want stuff uh, removed locally if it's removed on the next cloud client? Then your next cloud client becomes your hub of file management. You're right. like, if I wanna archive all my files and, and free up some disk space on my phone because over you time, can. Yeah, you can. You can. You can. Right. You can just so, delete it right so, off the phone, and then guess what? You still have a copy of it. Exactly. Exactly. So that's that's the easiest way to to manage that. I found, um, and there there are, are plenty of other things that I've I've used to sync up or sync down. Like there are actually there was a there was a series that I threw up on my Nextcloud instance, and I just downloaded one video at a time, yeah. and I was I was watching it offline as I was um, traveling Going through it. Yeah. Right, yeah. because it's like I don't want to use a connection and wait for wait for the stream to buffer and yada yada yada. Let me just let me just download it. Let me just have it right. And that was an easy easy way to transfer it over to the phone. And and really that could be throughout any device. And and that really comes in handy when I start considering my laptop too, right? Because if I'm recording something on my laptop, right, and I want to send it here, there, or anywhere, I really have two options, right? Either I use an application to talk to someone, so like you, when I'm when I'm uploading files to Element, right, I could I could throw it there. But if I you have to use it on literally anything else, right, I need the actual file. Right. right and and right. to do that, the easiest way to, to keep it is is to throw it in next cloud. Right. So and and then my phone also gets access to it. Easy peasy. I mean it's that's by default. That's it's that's a win win. Right. right? So that's their official application that manages all of that. The next and, and possibly most important, but also most convoluted, is their contacts and calendar, right? So, so the calendar for Nextcloud can be synced down to the native Android calendar by way of the CalDev protocol. The easiest way to do this is by downloading an application to do that, and that's DevX, and use it to log in and sync one or more of your calendars that are in your Nextcloud account. Now, you and I talked about last episode how you keep multiple different calendars all synced up to your Nextcloud account, right? And right. I kind of give yeah. a little little sneak peek of that's how I get everything on here because I can choose which ones I want on my Nextcloud account to sync back to my phone. And then it's it's easy. And, and actually, that's native to the Android phone. So I can use any kind of application. I can use... Uh, any kind of scheduling process or add or remove stuff like I would to any other calendar through my Android device. And, and that just makes it easy. It makes it native. It makes it natural. Um, and then, you know, the, in integration done by the developers, like I said, it, it, it works natively with the official Nextcloud application. And that's, that's true of context as well. Uh, so you're talking about on your iPhone, and we're going to hit that up in a, in a second here. But, but Android will have that too. And I did link to the instructions on how to work with Nextcloud. That's actually through the DevX5 site. So that is uh, on the on the show notes page. That or on the excuse me on the documentation page. Uh, that'll lead you right to going through uh, syncing and 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 all those other options really. And I don't know if you're someone who likes tinkering with options. I. I, I, I've said before, but I like going through and, and changing whatever I can and, and you know, being being the little puppet master, uh, figuring out everything I can I can switch. Editing every, any configuration possible, basically. Oh, we know, we know. <laughs> but if you just want to you just want to set it up and use it, that's that's where you're going to go. And, and uh, you'll be off to the races. And, and really, that's just made my life super easy because it, it's not only my next hub calendar, it's not only my work calendar, it's also my Camboard calendar, uh, it's, it's also my email calendar, it's, it's anything I want is right there in front of me. So that makes, that makes everything easier. Um, the last one I wanted to touch on was bookmarks. Now, the most frustrating thing to deal with if you don't have one of the major browsers proprietary bookmark syncing tools is how to share bookmarks between devices. 
Yeah. Uh, luckily, Nextcloud has a bookmark application that adds this functionality to the base server, and the Android application is available that pairs with it. Right. So I know we haven't gone over third-party applications yet, but this is one of the ones that I use exhausted exhaustively okay. is this flocus is this not flocus is this something different so the browser extension uh for chrome for firefox or gotcha. whatever is gotcha. flocus yeah gotcha so but the the official application is just called bookmark just called bookmarks okay yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's it's super easy to find and install and i believe i do link to the nextcloud application in the documentation um so that's there and the the Android application uh, is as well linked, so that's that's an easy install. Uh, my one gripe with it is that it doesn't show a folder hierarchy like you would assume, like every right. other bookmark manager does, like Nextcloud does, and Flockus does. But like the Android application is just like a flat, like a, here's here is yeah. everything just yeah. a long list. Oh man. I'm like, why Why would you do that? Like, what? Yeah. what is your design decision that you're like, no, of all the things I'm going to not implement? It's a folder <laughs> it's structure. Be folders, <laughs> a folder structure. I mean, it's it's easy enough to search if you don't have, you know, 500,000 of them. But still, it's 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 frustrating. Now, you can't There's... organize it by tags. Um, oh, so if man. you want to tag all your folders, like, that's a way to do it. Not my not my preference, though. A lot of... A lot of I mean, we've had this discussion before. Searching by tags, searching by hierarchy, you know, organization. It <clears throat> it accomplishes the same kind of, I need to organize it somehow in two distinctly different ways. Right. Uh, with two distinctly different philosophies on w how how should organization be handled, all right? And and they've gone the tag route. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. I'm just going to, I'm I'm not going to use that. I was wondering, Jack, what's your experience been with any of the iPhone uh, applications? I have the official contacts and calendar is just, uh, I don't know if you've, I don't know how it is on the Android phone, but contacts and calendar is basically syncing via CalDev, which I did. Ha so I can get the calendar. No problem. Calendar is easy to sync. Now the card dev I have, you can sync it with Nextcloud, and I haven't done it yet. All my, unfortunately for me, all my contacts mm -hmm. are linked back to an outlook account. So what I had to do, so I had X, so I have to go into Outlook, and Outlook makes it. Who would have thought they make it difficult to get off of, right? So you can ex you can export everything from Outlook, but it's in a CSV. So you have to go out. You got to get pretty techy with this one. You have to go out to GitHub. And there's this project out there that says it's like a CSV to Cal that or Card Dev. Yeah, and Card, card Dev count yeah. is contacts Card Dev. So you have to go out to GitHub. You have to grab this project and it's csv to card dev and you basically take you have to link you know which row goes to which item in card dev um kind of a pita yeah you know kind of a huge pain but um it's doable i'm not going to sit here and say it's not doable now bookmarks i have not seen an app for that i have not messed with that one at all um the official app's fine it you know it's like it, it's the official application for Nextcloud. It feels like, you know, it's a mobile version of what's kind of already out there. Now, the one thing I do like is being able to download files and have them locally, kind of how you mentioned earlier. For, I guess, series or any kind of MP4, you can download it and have it on the go instead of using data and going directly back to your Nextcloud site. Yeah, I linked to the bookmark application page in iOS, and I'm actually going to change that because I thought I'd link to their next bookmark, which is their iOS application for bookmarks. So it does exist. It is on the App Store um, and, and available. And like we said, I mean, we haven't gone over third-party applications yet. This is the kind of stuff that we're going to be diving into pretty heavily once once we get into that, that realm of what can you really eke out of a next cloud instance and and this is this is just a taste of, the, of it you know and this this little functionality that i found indispensable in my day-to-day -day life i mean that's this is just how i use it yeah i didn't even know that uh next bookmark application was out there so i'm glad you did mention it i was like there's got to be there's got to be one how can you not have so yeah i was i was happy to find it at least uh but that's really all i wanted to go over with with mobile um now there's 
there's a lot more to it once you start diving into how do I get it set up? What preferences do I want to use? Right. And if that's your concern, right, the, the thing you're going to want to do is have a sit down with us and then we can say, Hey, look, this is, this is the options you have, right? Especially if you have concern about keeping your contacts backed up or making sure that your photos are always available. Yeah. Right. Um, if, if, if stuff like that is concerning you, then we sit down and we say, all right, here's, here's your step-by-step -step to get you set up and ready to go with your new next cloud instance from our compose. So that makes it, that makes it easy. Uh, and then we can do that. Um, we actually offer, uh, one consultation, right. With, with any given instance. So once, once we kick that off, right, then we can, then we can offer other ones, uh, as well. And, and we can, we can go through that with you. Uh, we can we can walk you through that process. Yeah, but I think that first step is reaching out. Absolutely. So I'd highly recommend it. Yeah, we're happy to walk through this stuff, and we do love this stuff. I think. I mean, I'm already too, talking about so. it, so I, I, you're not stealing anything away from me, asking me to talk about it more. So that's that's fine by me. And it's I mean it's it's not easy to to sit down and, and have that conversation sometimes, right? And and trying to trying to get that information across right is something we want to become better at uh so i i think i think what jack was able to yeah. to do this week with the the grab bag episode was uh pick up pick up a book to kind of to kind of go through that right and and to see does does stuff make sense to it's, someone who doesn't understand this yeah it's 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 talking to your it's talking to find out is there a need Right. And that's kind of what it, that's really what I would describe it as. Now I'm going to kind of go through it basically. So this week I read, it's called the mom test. It's, I absolutely love it. It was a, not only was it a pretty short book, um, it was very practical and a very, I, I thought it was very it was pretty good title. I'll admit <laughs> the, not only the reviews, but <laughs> <laughs> like it was the worst name the guy could have picked for a book title. <laughs> <laughs> okay there you go there's my hot take on the book all the information all the information in it was awesome though i like i'm gonna so i have a pdf of it i'm gonna go out and buy the hard copy or buy a soft cover copy of it because it's pretty short it's i think it was about 150 pages it's it was almost like a pamphlet it was almost like a kind of long paper with practical sit down advice like hey you can't go to your customer and ask if this is a good idea because most of the time they're just going to come back and say yes because they don't want to hurt your feelings or they don't care enough about the problem. So there I pulled out. Yeah, some what's the first one it. you have here? So I yeah, I'm kind of jumping out of order here, but yeah, so this first one is trying to learn from a customer trying to learn from customer conversations is like excavating a delicate archaeo archaeological site. The truth is down there somewhere, but it's fragile. While each blow with your shovel gets you closer to the truth, you're liable to smash it into a million little little pieces if you use too blunt of an instrument. So kind of jumping right down from that, it's, you know, people say you shouldn't ask your mom whether your business is a good idea. It's technically true, but it misses the point. You shouldn't talk to, <laughs> you shouldn't ask anyone whether your business is a good idea or not, at least not in those words. Uh, your mom will lie to you just because she loves you. But it's a bad question that invites everyone to lie to you at least a little. Uh, it's not. I, this is the the part I really liked. It's it's not anyone else's responsibility to show you to show us the truth. It's our responsibility to find it, and we do that by asking good questions. And basically, this book kind of goes through what are those good questions? What are the questions to avoid? What's the information to avoid? So, I don't have the book pulled up right now. Um, right off the bat, it kicks into like a a list of, Hey, these are good questions to ask, or Hey, these are bad questions. But basically it kind of prescribes, kind of says, talk about their life instead of the idea, ask about specifics instead of generics or opinions about the future, and then talk less and listen more. So very three kind of very interesting points I thought on, because usually at least the way I've been thinking about it, I'm kind of turning it on its head. I've been thinking so much about the sales and the pitch. I'm like, wait, hang on. Maybe we need this first step of almost idea about is there a need in the I'll go down even more it's are we selling are you selling a vitamin or are you selling a painkiller and the painkiller is I need this now and the vitamin is this know, will be good for you down the this road this will yeah. help you so it's fine 
it's finding the it's finding the burn it's right it's finding the is this a serious problem for you and it's like okay yeah it is what would you be willing you know what would you pay well not only that but for this but to be fixed? any like, any given service think, is going to be trying to help someone right because you can't run a business if you're not helping someone so right, how right. do you help them if you don't know what they need help right with? Right, exactly. And so you can't just, he said one of the worst ideas is just a cold pitch, which I thought totally, right? You have to understand what they need and what their pain points are. Um, so I kind of went through, uh, He, I'll, I'll keep going here. So he talked about three types of bad data um, in the next couple of chapters. Uh, so basically when you ask a conversation, he said, you know, there are three types of things you want to look out for. Okay, so it's compliments, fluff, and ideas that you want to look out for. Compliments, you're supposed to deflect compliments. Uh, you want facts and commitments, not compliments. Avoid them completely by not mentioning the idea. You want to find their pain point, though, right? I mean, the compliment's good, but at the end of the day, you want you want them to commit to bond. You want to you want the facts, and you want them to commit to it. You don't want them to say, "Oh, that looks great." You want, okay, great. Will, would are you interested in buying this right and when they say yes that i would i would kind of always kind of for. flip it on its head um, and say yes are you willing to let me help you right because i i almost never think of it as as a sale right right i right. mean i i i have a lot of this going on in my day-to-day -day, whether it's uh helping my coworkers, you know helping people i know in real life you know helping you know whoever yeah, I've got to keep this in mind, right? Especially if I'm asking you how how can I help you, and they totally. come back with, "Oh, you're so nice." I'm like, well, "That's not a I, I need a." <laughs> what you didn't didn't? What do you need help with? Right? <laughs> can I help you move? Can I help you? Well, and the, I just ran into that too. Uh, case in point, right? I had a conversation with my mom on Monday. And I was like, all right, you're getting ready to move, like literally out of my childhood home. Like you've got so much stuff in there, so many memories, so many. What can I actually help with? Even if it's just praying for you, right? Even, even if it's yeah. just kind of like, like being there to support yeah. you or saying, no, mom, I don't actually need that one crappy drawing I have from third grade. I, I promise you, you can get rid of that and it will not hurt my feelings in the least. How how can do you need do you need right. a pair of arms to carry stuff down to the curb like like literally I mean we had this uh, ping pong table that was just so rusted out and bent and twisted and you know she just she she couldn't carry it out so I was like yeah I can I can be your hands there that's that's fun right um, but I needed to I actually I really like that quote above where it says um, you're liable to smash it into a little million pieces if you use too blunt of an instrument. You can't come at this saying, hey, right. tell me how to help you. You have to be delicate Why are you telling me it? how right. to help? Right. Tell me how to help you. Right, right, right. You need to care for right. people. I mean, people people care about that. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's it's it, it's so, the, the conversation can get so, del you know, it's like hitting something very delicate. If you hit it, it's a dig site, basically. You're searching for the truth. It's out there. You can't use a jackhammer to pull yeah. out, you know, to yeah, pull out fossils. There you go. You can hold on to that. You can hold on it. to that quote. Love that's it. a that's another one. Yeah, but but I think I think we're really getting to the meat of it here, which is kind of why I got so excited because I'm like, yes, deflecting compliments. I I didn't even think about that before. But yeah, that doesn't help. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up. I'm glad you brought up the exact example. Like, oh, you're so helpful that does not tell me anything about what you need help with or what I can, you know, what I can do basically. Um, the second one was fluff. I actually loved this one. Uh, the world's most deadly fluff is I would definitely buy that. And he, he wrote this for startup. So he says, uh, you know, as a founder, you want to believe it's money in the bank. You're like, you know, anyone who says I would definitely buy that. You immediately think to yourself, literally yeah. money in the bank. Perfect. Great. Sign up, you know, sign up so you know do that yeah but this is this is also my favorite folks are wildly optimistic about what they would do in the future 10 out of 10 right there for that line they're always more positive more excited and willing to pay in the imagined future than they are once it arrives 
for everything. For everything. For everything. I, Monday, I said I was going to do something Monday night, and then it was going to free up my Tuesday to do <laughs> X, Y, and Z. Sure enough, I got... I was optimistic about X getting, you know, X done. <laughs> y and Z, mm, nope. <laughs> but it's it just hit that one hit really close to home. Um and then he kind of goes into, you know, what's the worst the worst kind of question is would you ever? And he kind of hits the nail on the head. Of course they would. That doesn't mean they will. And he kind of brings up a gym example that he kind of goes into. It's like when's he says, uh, would you ever go to the gym if it were, you know, right next to your house? Oh, of course, you know. Of course I would. And then he's like, well, how often do you go to the gym now? Oh, I don't. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, what's, so what's going to, ch- you know, what <laughs> is it really going to, is it really going to change? It's obviously not that big of a pain point for you. If you're not going now to the gym, why is bringing it to your house going to. Yeah. And I, I think you were talking about what was, what was the other one you went over with dating your customer? What was that? That book. The uh, that was the sit. No, that was the um, content oh, marketing. Uh, I thought that was the sales fire. Might have been. I think that was the Might sales fire. The one, the one thing I I was thinking maybe. about there is the 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 good question to ask would be something more along the lines of how have you been attempting to address this issue already? And that's exact. That's exactly. I don't know if you were looking ahead. Um, there are some, so yeah, yes. So uh, I don't know if I, I don't know where I have it. I maybe, but that's like an exact question to ask. Is uh, because if 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 someone says, all right, going going tangential to the gym question, it's like if you're concerned about your weight, yeah, you can be concerned and not take a any action on it. I'm not gonna recommend you a workout routine if you know you haven't done literally anything. I might. I might start and saying, "Hey, let's let's start working out, or you know, let's start looking at what you're eating, right?" Instead of saying, "All right, I think I got, I think I got the a better routine for you," and they're like, "Yeah, better than nothing is always going to be better." Something, right, right. When you have to ask, how committed are to, are they to it? And I think that's kind of what you're getting at, which is what I really liked. It's you know, how serious do you take this? And he goes down the business right route, you know, not not unimportant, but you know, he goes business routes. Like how serious do you take this? Do you make money from it? You know, how much time do you spend per week? What other tools and services do you use for it? And what are you doing to improve it? So not similar to the gym, but it's those same, it's that exact kind of question that you have to ask when you're talking to people about basically their pain points. Um, and then the third one, uh, that he mentioned, just kind of jumping back in here to the bad data was ideas he says uh write them down but don't rush to add them and then i added in quotes here don't don't rush to add them to the to-do list obviously we're going to add them the backlog right uh they're going to go somewhere right right yeah i i i can't either yesterday i was trying to come up with it i, I it's just the big the big board for me junk but, board um, it's like it's like my yeah. junk drawer i just keep throwing um, stuff in it he said, you know, when you hear a request, it's your job to understand the motivations which led to it. So you have to dig. You have it goes kind of that five whys. Why you you have to keep digging to the root of what's the motivation behind the request? What do they actually need or what are they actually yeah, looking for? Absolutely. I mean, um, that's and that's part of the, what comes naturally when you care for other people. Right? You you want to get down to their motivations, right? You want to get down to um, you know, as as we were talking right. about last week, you know, why haven't you been able to complete this? Do you have some um, autonomy? Do you, you know? Do 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 you feel like Block you, you're around being blocked yeah. somehow? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's 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 questions to ask, absolutely, as to you know what's going on with this, and and if you if you care, if you can bring yourself to care, and you don't necessarily even have to start by caring about them, right? You start by saying, "Hey, I think, I think open source software is ethical, right? I think uh, there's there's problems that are being solved in a unethical way, right? I care about you, and I care about your longevity and your well being, right? Let's start there, right? You can always kind of start at that kind of common ground, even if you don't have anything right. further up. Maybe you both love open source software, and boom, you're already at that level, right? 
but fundamentally you start right there, where, that whereas, level, you know, right. you you have a problem obviously right if if you're talking to me and i would like to help if at all possible so i'm going to i'm going to let you know right if if i think your problem is solvable by me if i can help right. can i help totally <laughs> absolutely that's, I'm gonna that's let the you part know of if it. i can help yeah. so you know to get towards the truth you need to reject the reject the generic claims in the fluffy promises, right? Instead, anchor them towards uh, the life they already lead and the actions that are, they're already doing right now, right? Because the future, I'm going to hold on to this one. I love it. Folks are wildly optimistic about what they would do in the future. It's hits too close to home almost, but yeah. Um, so you have to ask the person what they're actually doing now and bring them into, bring them to reality and say, well, okay, well, what, you know, what are you doing right now to solve this problem? And it's like, oh, well, I'm not doing anything. Well, you must not care that much about solving it then. There, there, that's a different conversation to have, right, obviously. Um, but you you don't want to go down that path and, and start asking these, you know, would you ever questions as, as soon as you hear that. Well, would you ever go to the gym, you know, or, you know, would you ever, you know, it's like, yeah, I would love would to, go to, go to go to the moon. Yes. Am like, I going to get my you know, it's like, it, it, pilot's it, it, license or, or go through astronaut training? No. It sounds like a pain. Yeah, would you? Would you? Would you go through uh, probably astronaut not. training? Probably oh, not. Man, you got to say yes just well, to be this is <laughs> just to go with it. <laughs> completely segue. But I was talking to my uh, uncle and, and aunt the other day, and they were talking about their their son who's gifted in, in, in a whole bunch of things, but like doesn't really focus in on anything. Like it, it's a you know, flavor of the week kind of thing. You, it, it, there's always something out there that's new. That's, that's cool. That's interesting. It could be video editing. It could be server administration. It could be, you know, pick a topic. Right. And exactly. And, and I kind of said when I sat down and I decided I'm going to be a, a tech guy. I'm going to be a, a server admin, right? What I did is I gave up on the dreams of being an astronaut, right? Because that takes, that takes years of dedication. That takes, right? I mean, I, I would have had to have done a lot of things differently if I had that goal in mind. I, I didn't. And, and that's why I did the things I did. And I, I'm, I'm glad I did. But by dedicating myself to this, I lost my potential. I, I, became actualized i i actually became something i actually did something but that other potential slipped away i i can never regain that potential yeah 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 and sometimes sometimes it's a very scary step to take right and that's why it's so easy to have that potential in our heads and say well i'm very optimistic about the future because if i start right now I could become an astronaut or I could also become a server admin. It's like, well, you can't do both. And that gets into a whole different conversation because you can't just wake up one, you know, day before you die and say, I could have been. It's like, no, people don't judge you on what you could have been. You know, you could have been anything. You People judge you on the decisions you made and what you actually did. So that's my little rant on that. But absolutely true. Yeah, totally true. Um. So, yeah, so all three of these, you know, the data points, the conversations you have, it leads into these questions that we already kind of talked about. And then are do you want to, it, it, it kind of leads into, are you looking for something to solve your problem right now? Or is this something that would just be nice to have? Because if you're solving that problem right now for them, it's something they're going to buy, something essentially that they're going to buy. They're going to say, yes, I need this. There's a demand for it. Um Right. Absolutely. So he, we already kind of touched on those questions. You know, how serious do you take this? Do you make money from it? How much time do you spend per week on this? What are the tools and services you use for it? What are you doing to improve it? And I really like this. This is kind of his last kind of prescription. The book didn't even feel that prescribe I feel like I'm making it way more like, hey, you should do this. And I think that's just because I interpret it, took a lot of it and said, you know what? I need, I need to do these things because they're good things to do good questions to ask but he said um i think it was actually a title chapter um prepare your list of three always pre-plan the th three most important things that you want to learn from any given type of person and this was mostly around meetings when you walk in you if you if you walk into a meeting 
this is my this is one of the another, there was a lot I really liked about this. He said, if you walk into a meeting and you walk out and you don't know what happened, it was a waste of a meeting. If you don't have any actions of where to go next or what's next, he said it was a waste of time, waste of meeting. Uh, he says, you know, getting back into these three questions, focus on the three questions will seem the murkiest and the most important right now. Uh, learning from customers doesn't mean you have to be wearing a suit and drinking boardroom coffee. Asking that. <laughs> I love that one. I absolutely, I absolutely, I absolutely love that one. I absolutely love that one. And then um, asking the right questions is fast and touches on topic that uh, touches on topics people find quite interesting. Um, then he added a couple, there, there were rules of thumb kind of throughout the book. And this is just one I added. He said, uh, if it feels like they're doing you a favor by talking to you, it's probably too formal, especially for early conversations. Early conversations are very fast. Uh, the chats grow longer as you become, as, as you move from, you know, early and broad questions, you know, is this a real problem towards more specific product indus and industry related issues? You know, what other software do we have to integrate with? to close the sale. Basically, I really like preparing that list of three, the, the three most important questions, um, and what you want to get away from kind of every conversation you have. Cause it make it really makes you think it makes you prepare. It makes you say, okay, what, you know, what do I need to learn from them in order to either solve their problem or what you, you find what pain they're having in their current life? It's, it's basically finding the pain points, right? And so I kind of, I did come up yeah, with three, I, I was three kind of questions gonna ask, here. Yeah. You give me a hard time for it here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, these are the three I have. Um, so the first one's a three parter, <laughs> if that counts. It's <laughs> have you ever lost track of money? Have you ever lost track of time or something you needed to get done, but didn't? And then have you ever lost track of an important file? It's like, tell me about a time when that happened, you know? Usually, most people, I would say most people have a time that was, yes, something did like something like this did happen. It's like, tell me about when that happened. And then the third question is basically following up and saying, did you ever look at any kind Wait, of tools did I to miss track or manage question? these? You know, tell me about a time when one of the, it's kind of describe, describe oh. when they happened, oh, okay. how they happened, yeah, how yeah. to make you feel. And then the third one is, did you ever look at any kind of solution for this to, f to yeah. figure out if the person actually yeah. cares about it? It's digging it, you know, it's kind of digging to that. Is this a pro, you know, is this a problem for you? Do you, and do you care enough about it to solve it? Um, but yeah, that's, those are the three I came up with. Yeah. Just, no, that's fair. You know, talk, yeah. Talking to people, figuring out pain points. Um, so all in all, I'd recommend reading the book. It was, it was the first, the first chapter was very good. It, it really hooks you in immediately. Um, it's, it starts off with the a quick preface and then it jumps into a conversation in the first chapter. Um, where did he get, I, I loved, where did so. he get the mom test? Yeah, is, that, is that the, your mom will lie to you the most because she loves you? Be okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's basically saying ask good questions and you'll get good answers. That's fair. Good answers, right? Good data in, good data out. Yeah. Yeah. Baby, yeah you know, exactly. Garbage in, garbage out. Um. Okay. So. Well, I I loved hearing that. That was that was great. Yeah, I liked it. I, I definitely learned from it. Yeah, I'd, I'd recommend checking it out if you haven't. I'd recommend it to anybody. Um, and also I, I I'd have to ask everybody to you know think about at least those three questions right there uh you know have you ever ha, have you ever lost well it was going to be have you ever lost track of money you know have you ever lost track of time or something you needed to get done um ha, you know have you ever lost track of something important online that you needed and i think the one you went to the one time was tax you know tax documents especially uh, i know we're coming up on it here you know reach out talk to us about a time it occurred and then, you know, have you ever looked at solutions out there to manage or track, you know, tasks, files, money, any of that? Is it is it a real issue to you? And if it is, especially, I'd highly yeah, recommend reaching especially, out. Especially, you know, if, if you're listening to this and, and you have someone in mind who, who you've just had this conversation with, right? Because it's, this is this is happening all day, every day. I mean, we're, we're needing to become more tech savvy, 
right? And there's there's a dearth of time to actually sit down and, and learn about these things. So there's there's a chance that you know someone else that needs to hear this too. Uh, so what I want you to do is is either either yourself go to rcompose.com, sign up for the mailing list, or have them go to rcompose.com uh, and, and and sign up for the mailing list. We, we send these out. I guarantee we're going to talk about this uh, in, in upcoming episodes. I mean, uh, this is this is something that we can rehash over and over again. This is something that's going to be evergreen and something that we personally are going to want to keep in our minds, uh, fresh in our minds going forward. Um, and so with that promise of of these, these more of these things to come, right? For, for now, we hope you enjoyed this episode of our Composed Cast. Thank you, be safe, and we'll see you all in two weeks. Bye, everybody.